Uh, well, let's obviously let's start with the Adams family. How exactly did you go about scoring your character? If you read the, the original strips from Charles Adams, uh, it's quite different. So how did you create that character? That well, story? actually, uh, 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 Charles Adams didn't do strips. Uh, uh, Charles Adams uh, did panels. Mm -hmm. And there would be, you know, in, uh, one week in the New Yorker, there would be a single page uh, by, by Charles Adams. I, uh, in, when I was in college, which was a couple of years ago, uh, I, uh, my roommate and I were such fans of Charles Adams that we would, uh, uh, we would they, they would collect his cartoons and put them in a book, you know, called Monster Rally or something like that. And that was the title of one of them. You, you guys probably know all that anyway. But uh, we would, uh, we would buy, at, we had very little money, but we would sort of pool it and buy another volume so that we could razor out a panel, frame it, and put it up in our, uh, the room that we shared. Uh, and um, so I, I was intensely into Charles Adams. And so when, and when I was in a movie called The Wheeler Dealers, uh, the company that produced it, uh, Filmways, uh, got in touch with me uh, saying that uh, uh, they had gotten uh, preview cards back on the performance in the film and, and uh, they were very positive and so they wanted to do a bunch of projects with me. And they had a couple of movies in mind and, and a television series. The series turned out to be uh, The Adams Family and so I ended up uh, meeting with the creator of the show, a fellow named David Levy, uh, who was a former uh, executive in advertising and in uh, television. Uh, he was uh, in charge of programming at NBC and he put on The Tonight Show. He, he uh, helped develop The Tonight Show along with uh, a man named Pat Weaver, Sylvester Pat Weaver. I've never heard of him, but he was a great man in broadcasting. And uh, actually, the father of Sigourney Weaver. Uh, and uh, uh, so they put on lots of great shows. David was a man of, uh, of taste. And uh, he, uh, he was walking down Fifth Avenue one day and he saw a collection of Charlie's books, Charles Adams' books. And uh, he thought, hey, that could be a series. And uh, so Charlie only gave us a little character description, quick character description to go on. We didn't have much to go on. Uh, uh, and uh, he hadn't looked for anyone else uh, for the show. Uh, he just wanted me uh, to do uh, the uh, character, of, uh, well, wasn't even named at that point. Uh, 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 Charlie uh, gave us a uh, choice, of uh, two names. One was Gomez and the other was Rapelli. <laughs> <laughs> and we chose Gomez. <laughs> and, and so David and I met for cocktails at the at Polo Lounge in Beverly, in Beverly Hills. Which I, I enjoyed their martinis, and, and we uh, and, and we would have a discussion about this television show, and so we met for many months actually uh, talking about the show. And during those meetings, all the uh, stuff came up about uh, the, uh, the love affair between Gomez and Morticia, and uh, I I had wanted it to be uh, an affair in the grand manner. This was a uh, classic, passionate romance, and uh, David liked that idea, and so that was incorporated. Well, it started, you know, hints of it were in the very first uh, script that uh, Ed James and uh, Seaman Jacobs wrote. These were writers who uh, were wonderful writers. They, they, they were part of Bob Hope's famous team of, 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 of writers, the guys that he would call in the middle of the night for a one-liner. Uh, and uh, 
they worked on this first uh, presentation film, and uh, eventually, uh, after we did that and it was successful, it didn't air, but it was shown to the affiliates, uh, a man named Nat Perrin came into the picture, and Nat had come to Hollywood to write for the Marx Brothers. And uh, so, uh, when you look at the Adams family, you can see there's a, uh, in some ways, there's a sort of ancestor there uh, to the kind of, the feeling uh, among the people uh, in, in, in the show. Uh, you know, if you look at the Marx Brothers, they, they did all these crazy things with one another, but you could tell there was a, a, a unity with them, a bond. And uh, David had once described the Adams family as father knows best with different people. <laughs> and, 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 uh, so uh, that was sort of the, the foundation. And, uh, we worked for a few months on it and then began to cast the rest of the show. And we got everybody, we cast everybody except that we had so many beautiful women testing for Morticia and good actresses, but somehow something was missing, and then uh, somebody came up with the idea of offering the part to Carolyn Jones, and uh, I thought, Chai, that's great. And they said, well, she may want uh, to be billed first in a nice, uh, and I had already signed a contract that I had for, I said, I don't care, uh, I, I just want to do the show with her. Uh, and she loved the idea, and we actually we became lifelong friends. Actually, uh, in fact, uh, when she knew she was not going to make it uh, with cancer, she got a third party to ask me if I would do her eulogy, and uh, I said, "Well, I'm not going to think about it now, but yes, you know, of course." Uh, and so, you know, we we knew each other well right up to the end, and. Uh, uh, you know, uh, I miss her uh, as I miss Ted Cassidy and Jackie Coogan and Blossom Rock and all those wonderful people that played in that show, like Alan Jocelyn and Rolf Sedan, and, you know, uh, Mr. Hilliard and uh, um, the mailman. Uh, <laughs> I mean, that was Rolf Sedan who played the mailman. And then the guest people who were Vito Scotti. He did so many episodes. Uh, Sam Picasso, I think, was one of the characters he played. And not, not related to Pablo. But, but, uh, <laughs> anyway, uh, you've heard enough about all that, but uh, uh, there's much more to tell. It's a very interesting uh, activity, putting that show together. And if you really look closely, it's a very, uh, uh, oddly enough, life-affirming show because strange as these people are, there's something fundamentally right about them. They really care about one another and they, uh, they exhibit tremendous affection uh, uh, together. And uh, that can conquer a lot of things. And I've, I've had some great feedback over the years from people who said, you know, my mother was uh, was dying, and the one thing she enjoyed was looking at the Adams family and getting a kick out of it. And um, that, uh, that's something I'm grateful for. I'm grateful that I was uh, able to be involved in a, in a show that had, that commanded that, that kind of love. Uh, you know, it's a big secret in life. Um, if you can put yourself in the other person's shoes and feel for them, uh, you can accomplish a lot in this world. We need as much of that as we can get. <laughs> and so when I get the feedback from you guys, uh, my heart is warmed because I feel that exchange that we have. And it's important to me. The Adams Family was actually a groundbreaking television series in several ways, and, and you were saying just now that they were one of the first couples who were very visibly